Welcome back to The Road Forward, a podcast for trucking industry leaders. Brought to you by TruckSpy, the all-in-one fleet management platform built to empower your drivers to be productive, compliant, and safe. My name's Alex, and in this week's episode, we have, uh, we're have we going to go over some headlines, and we have Elise from the marketing team here at TruckSpy. She's going to talk about um, you know a new person's perspective, learning about the trucking industry. So let's get started with these headlines. I got for you this one right here from Reuters. It uh, was on December 2nd, Uber and Aurora to expand self-driving truck operations in Texas to meet the holiday rush. And um, I tried to read this article before, and uh, it's a really interesting pilot program they're launching. Um, I didn't even realize that recently a uh, a 600-mile commercial lane between Fort Worth and El Paso, I live in Texas, and it's like, goodness gracious, uh, I must have missed that, where uh, apparently this this might be okay, where, you know, from Fort Worth just across I-20, and then that turns into I-10 to El Paso, looks like that route has been designated okay for complete driver out vehicle. Um, so that's that's an interesting interesting section, um, but it looks like the the article goes on to say that the we're here Uber Freight is a platform that connects shippers who needs good moves with available truck drivers. The company's launched the pilot program about a year ago auton- uh, to autonomously transport goods between Dallas and Houston. And if you recall, we talked about that Kodiak route also from Houston to Dallas. So it looks like maybe that lane was designated by um, Texas. Uh, politicians to be okay for autonomous trucks because this one is a complete driver out program. I don't even know. It doesn't doesn't specifically say that they're going to have a driver in there. Maybe for this testing phase, they will, but more than likely it looks, it looks like they're going to have a complete driver out operation in this, um, in this, in this route. Um, Don't get me wrong. (laughs) Fort Worth to El Paso is a really boring route, but also it's not good cell phone service. So I wonder what they're doing that. And, you know, this is why Starlink is a, is a whole interesting, you know, business case, business model, um, because more and more trucks are going to need that. Uh, but it's good. It's going to be really, really interesting to pay attention how, um, you know, the reliance on drivers is going to be, um, you know, for companies less and less. Um, it looks like Aurora is a pretty big company, too. It looks like FedEx Corporation and Toyota Motor Company are partners. So, I mean interesting read it says about two minutes so check it out i'll link it below as a former motor carrier this next one is uh you know it uh it's it's some good news i should say okay obviously we're talking about ch robinson settles crash lawsuit after supreme court denial uh this is coming to us from freight caviar and uh you know this is this is that one situation where it's like a broker overstepped their ground and became you know, a little, a little bit too involved in the transport, in the operations of the trucking business. And it looks like they have a really good timeline right here too, by the way. Uh, so it's uh, a timeline of the CH Robinson case. Okay. So tractor trailer crashes into vehicles on highway in Nevada. Um, and that's December, 2016 and 2017. Um, they file a lawsuit against CH Robinson worldwide claiming negligence. This court case is just absolutely dragging on. It's like 2021 and finally, you know, we're in in 2023 and it finally settles. And it's like, goodness gracious, that took, I mean, you could say forever. Well, not really. It took whatever, six years. Um, But the interesting part is um, they covered exactly, you know, of course, obviously C.H. Robinson was fighting back a lot. um, And it looks like. Uh, despite the pushback, okay, um, uh, okay, so President and CEO Bob, is it Beisterfield? Beisterfield? I, I think, C, uh, yeah, so he is a CEO of C. Robinson. Uh, and so he said that because of this accident and this ruling, brokers are now, there. it seems like there's a lot of brokerages are going to like be held liable for this. Uh, and it's so funny cause I, where was this response? I literally saw it a second ago. Uh, one of the responses was like, oh yeah, right here, right here. Look at this. Attorney says we don't see many cases pursuing other brokerages because they're not negligent. It's like, my goodness, talk about being a savage attorney right here. You see this? They're not negligent. They do vet carriers. So, um, th- that is hilarious that, um, you know, Uh, the attorney is telling the C.H. Robinson CEO that, hey, essentially that like, even though you might assume that as a broker, you might not be liable um, because it's the motor carrier's responsibility, 
because you are the person that contracted that carrier, there's now a chance that you can be held liable. So, you know, I mean, again, this will probably help with weeding out the not so good carriers, the carriers that don't have a good safety score, the carriers that maybe have a bunch of cancellations, no shows, stuff like that. Um, you know, because now brokers understand they can be sued. Um, so I, I guess this is both good and bad for the carriers that, Hey, if you're a bad carrier, then, you know, you might, might want to get your stuff in order. But if you're a good carrier, this is going to help you because now you know that there's precedent set by this case, by this ruling, that if a broker oversteps and starts to tell you how to do your operations and manage your driver and, and so on and so forth, um, I obviously check the details of the case and whatnot. Um, but essentially, to my understanding, it's going to be a one of those things that it opens them up to liability. So I thought all in all, a, a very, very interesting, a very, very well, actually a good summary by Freight Ca Caviar. So um, I'll link this down below as well. Elise, how's it going today? It's doing good. Doing doing good. Um, okay, so for everybody that's, you know, maybe wondering who the heck is Elise, if you read any of our blogs, it was re written by Elise, okay? So she does all of our blogs. She's here on the Trucks by Marketing team, and she's actually been here longer than me. So uh, and maybe you should have done your own introduction or something. I don't know. <laughs> we'll, we'll see. But um, so Elise, you, um, you're, you're pretty new to trucking, correct? You're pretty new. Yeah, very new. Okay. And what did you do before, before trucking? Before, I mean, we're not doing really trucking. We, TruckSpy is a software company for trucking companies. But um, what did you do before TruckSpy? Right. So to kind of paraphrase that, I actually got a, a degree in fine arts um, in school. And then that led me to some volunteering opportunities, um, getting experience in graphic design, video editing, and writing. Like, those are always things that I really like doing. Um, so I actually, the, the job that I had before I worked for Trucks Buy is I worked in an embroidery shop and I did, so completely different, not anything related. Mm -hmm. um, but my first experience in customer service was that I would communicate sometimes with uh, the customers that we had because it was, it was an Etsy shop that we, that we ran. And um, then I actually ran my own Etsy shop for a while. So still not trucking related, but just a little bit getting my feet wet in like the customer service aspect. Um, okay. And so, yeah, that was, that was what I did previously. Okay. And then, and when did, when did you join Truck Spy? So I joined Truck Spy over two years ago. I think September was two years. Um, and really how I found Truck Spy, I was looking for remote customer service job. Um, that's just, I knew that's kind of what I wanted to do. And so, you know, I found trucks by, I found Flint. Um, I started on, and then I started on our support team actually. Okay. And, and th then Flint was like, wait, hold on. You have this, you know, you have the degree in design, um, or in, in fine arts, you said, right. Fine arts. It was. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, but you, you are good at designs too. So it's like, Let's get you on on writing, on doing some of our um, some of the designs that we've put out. Right, that that was the transition. That's how it occurred. Um, yeah, something like that. I think Flint has always kind of had me do little bits and pieces. I think he, you know, he's been really good about you know bringing someone on the team, seeing what they can actually do, not just sticking them in one job description and really using people and training them. So, you know, that's really most of my customer service experience, I started out talking to our FedEx contractors. Um, and that was, I did that for quite a while. And really I got to learn a lot about trucks by like the FedEx side of it, what we do for FedEx contractors, um, the IVMRs and how our system works behind the scenes. Um, but then from there, now I'm in the marketing team with you. And, um, mm -hmm. then like you said, I write a lot of our blogs and, um, so that's really led me to learn a lot about trucking as a whole. So I'm trying to get the big picture. Right. And so, um, speaking of learning of, about trucking, what, like, what are some things that you were surprised to find out? Well, I guess, um, you know, I, like I said, I did not know a lot about it at all. So really anything can be surprising to me. Um, things that there's like, <laughs> whatever to, you know, you've been in the trucking industry for a while. Right. Um, but I, uh, well, okay. So my dad, he's been a truck driver my whole life and I always knew what he okay. did, but I didn't really know a lot about it. I mean, it wasn't 
interesting to me as a kid. Like, you know, I would see him come home every day, do his paper logs. That's, you know, back then. But now I actually understand a lot more about what he does. And so a lot of like, I can have a conversation with him about, you know, ELDs, what, what you need to do, do that for and like dash cams and um, how all that stuff works, like violations. And so to like learn about these things is, is actually a little more interesting to me now. Um, I, uh, if we're talking about the trucking industry as a whole, um, I was really surprised mm -hmm. when I started researching into autonomous trucks. So I wrote an article about that um, a while ago. And I thought that was really interesting getting to research that. Um, I honestly really didn't know that that was a thing at all. Um, I didn't know that that was autonomous possible, trucks. I guess. It's kind of like, oh, you know, trucks that, or cars that drive themselves, right? It's like, we're going to have flying cars. You know, it's kind of like it was the same thing in my head. I didn't realize this was something that... It, we're, we're doing this now. Right. But, um, but what about some of the, maybe um, some of the legislative or some of the legal aspects of it? Cause I, I know you've written um, several blogs about um, like how companies, and obviously that's part of our, uh, the truck by sales pitch too. It's like, Hey, you could certainly get sued. Has, has it surprised like how aggressively trucking companies are held liable for their, for the accidents in, in, in your experience? Or is that, did that surprise you at all? Yeah, I guess it kind of did. Um, I didn't know a lot about that either. So, you know, I know one of Truckspy's big things is our, our dash cams. And so learning that a big reason why companies need to have that is because, or why it's a good idea, is because they could, they could get sued and the drivers have no way of defending themselves and the company doesn't. And it's these, these accident attorneys. Like that's, I, you know, I didn't really know that. So that, that is surprising. That was surprising to me. Right. Yeah. I mean, Lynn, like you mentioned, uh, like I had my own, I had my own motor carrier, or if, if you're not a new viewer to the podcast, it's like, I, I, had, I had my own motor carrier business and, and it just like, as a small business, when, you know, uh, margins are really thin in trucking, if you get an accident and you get sued, you can legitimately lose your house. Like legitimately the house that I live in, like my home, I could actually get sued and I could personally be held liable and therefore lose my house. So it's, it's a very interesting industry where, um, that, that can occur. Um, and I, I know a lot of times you, you actually cover some of those, um, some of the, both the new laws that are coming up and they're on the work, uh, you know, they're upcoming and, um, also some of the liability aspects of the trucking business. You cover that, um, on the blog really well. Um, I will make sure to link our blog uh, down below too. But to come back to this autonomous vehicle, um, it's funny because I just watched something where, um, you know, the predictions for autonomy, autonomous trucks are like at least 10 years. Um, and to give you an idea, like you you have a car, right, Elise? Yeah. And so your your car has cruise control, right, Elise? Yeah, it does. Right. And some of the newer cars have adaptive cruise control, Okay. Right. You, you, does your car have adaptive cruise control? I don't think so. <laughs> it's not a new no, car. Okay. So but... my, my minivan has a, 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 okay. So my minivan has adaptive cruise control. It's a couple years old. It's, I mean, like it's, it's adaptive cruise control is not a new thing. The, certainly mm -hmm. the full autonomous and full self-driving like Tesla has, that's definitely on the cutting edge, but adaptive cruise control is actually not, not a new thing. And to give you an idea, semi trucks, the newest, latest and greatest semi trucks, right now are finally coming out with just adaptive cruise control, but just adaptive, like adaptive cruise control is a, like maybe eight to 10 years old. And so it's like, they're finally just rolling around to come out with that. Like it automatically slows down your vehicle if you're on the cruise control. Um, and so I literally, like I was saying, just watch this video where he was saying the guy, the guy was explaining like autonomous trucks are really far out just because there is so many, so many risks and liabilities and who gets sued in the event of an accident. So there's a whole host of problems. So, um, I really want to get somebody from on somebody on the podcast to talk about that just cause I really want to dive deep into that. Um, yeah. and, and I know you'll probably cover it in a blog too. And so we really want to get a good grasp on, you know, how far away is this technology? It is an interesting technology, but it does seem like it's really far away. Um, so you, you you said your dad was a, he is a truck driver, correct? Or he was, he is, he is a truck driver. Yeah. He's done it he for a truck driver. over 20 okay. years. And, oh, okay. 
Yeah, so then he definitely has that experience before the law, uh, before the ELD mandate, and after paper logs and digital logs. So um, that's interesting. And like, what is what does he? Just, you want to go over briefly? Like, what does he haul? What does he do? Like, I, I just want to gauge like how, like what part of the trucking sector he's in. So he hauls for Freightliner. He runs a um, a low boy, and um, okay. so it's you know kind of like piggyback, but he's he's just hauling semis from and usually. He stays in, in one area. He hauls from like one specific terminal to, to, to another, I guess is the, the word for it. Um, you know, they're about an hour mm-hmm. or so apart. Um, but sometimes he does run trips across the country. I know like several years ago or when I was younger, he would he would take some longer trips. He's never been a, like a long haul trucker, I guess. You know, he's always been home a little bit more than that. Um, and then now he's, he's home okay. pretty much every day. He kind of just runs the same route, but so it changed a little for a little bit, but I think for most of my life, he has worked for the same company, just doing a slightly different thing. Okay. The, and, and that, that, I mean, that home, home almost every night is as surprising as that may seem, you know, you're doing a work from home job and obviously I'm working from home too. It's like as surprising as it may, as it may seem in trucking, it's one of those things like, Oh wait, the job might not actually have you home every night. Um, mm-hmm. d- like when you obviously got older and started working, and you started talking to your dad, did, did, did finding that out at all surprise you that there are jobs where you're not going to be home every night, let alone sometimes for weeks on end? Yeah, I mean, I guess I always kind of knew that that there were jobs like as a truck driver where you could be gone for weeks at a time, um, and. Mm-hmm you know, that is surprising. And I mean, people that can do that, I, I that's great. Um, yeah, I'm glad that, that my dad never had to do that. Um, <laughs> but you know, I guess right. it's, it's, it's good, but yeah. So he, he, he worked it out well, I think for what, for what he wanted to do. The, yeah, that's good. And, uh, what, like what upcoming blogs are you working on? Like what, what is capturing your interest in, in the moment? Like what can we expect to see published on the trucks by blog, uh, coming up? So I guess one of the things I'll be working on is kind of some steps on how to, how to be a, how to become a truck driver. Um, I think that's, that's kind of a important thing, you know, for people just starting out, which I know you, you kind of helped me with that one. Um, and I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Um, I, you know, I, I'd like to explore some things I've, I've thought about exploring are, um, you know, hours of service a little bit more. I always like to cover to some of the, headlines we've had some in the past about changing eld mandates so i try to kind of keep up Mm -hmm. with that kind of stuff um and just kind of see what's on the radar like right around the time i'm trying to write the blogs right right so you're trying to stay up to date on on you know the trucking industry current events right something like that yeah okay cool and as a whole you know since since you've been you know you've been a little bit, in, uh, you've been near trucking for the last two and a half years, roughly. Like, mm-hmm. you know, you probably got, have a good grasp on it. Like, how, have you developed any opinions on where you think the industry is headed? Obviously, the podcast is called The Road Forward. So, like, wh- where do you think the industry as a whole is going? You know, I thought about that. And I was thinking, too, I, I really try to keep an unbiased opinion a little bit, especially since I'm writing these blogs. Um, and... It, the thing too is I I'm I'm sort of on the on like the edge. I kind of have a a different perspective on it because I'm never I'm not a a contractor. I probably never will be, um, you know, anything like that. I'm I'm sort of just like viewing it from the from the outside in, and I I think you know it's hard for me to kind of have like a a fully formed opinion. But I I guess you know, I think trucking is always going to be really important. I think it's, it's going to change a lot as we get more technology. Um, I think there are a lot of pros and cons to that. And it'll be really interesting to see what actually pans out. Um, but yeah, I think that as a whole, though, it, it definitely has its ups and downs. I've seen that. Um, and I think that, that it'll continue to do that, but it will still be a, a really important industry for a long time. Right. Yeah, I, I agree, especially, you know, what is it? I, I forget whatever these statistics are, but it's like 70% of, um, of our, of the U S economy is like, 
um, consumer goods and whatever 80% of consumer goods on the shelves are delivered by truck drivers. So unfortunately, like, are, are we going to stop buying stuff anytime soon? Probably not. So therefore, trucking companies will always have work and there's always going to be a need for it. And so um, that that's uh, it, it, it's, a, it's an interesting and exciting and sometimes really frustrating industry to be in for sure. Elise, thank you so much for coming on. And if you are interested in the blogs that she writes, I'll leave a link in the description. It's on the Trucks by um, website. That's going to do it for this episode. Let me know in the comments down below what you think, and we will see you next week. Bye.